I just wanted to do another example of doing a dependent T in JASP. Now, before we were looking at before and after, which is the most common use of the dependent T, but I wanted to show you what it would look like if we had a pairing. Let's say we wanted to know, we, maybe we think that moms are always rating their kids higher than the teachers would. And so here we have the mom's rating and the teacher's rating. So this would be somebody like for Bobby. Mom rates Bobby and then the teacher rates Bobby. And then let's say the second row is for Sue. Now Sue's mom gives us her rating and then this is the teacher's rating of Sue. So what we're doing is we're not having the same person before and after. What we're saying is for Bobby, we have two scores, one from the teacher, one from the mom. For Sue, we have two scores, one from the teacher, one from the mom. And so this is why a paired dependent t-test would be used because we're pairing up these scores. So let's go ahead and click through in JASP so we could see how this would look. We'll click on d-tests and paired sample t. Now, remember I said you have to put the after in this box first. And in this case, we don't have an after and a before. You wanna put the variable that interests you most so that you know how to read the results. Now I had proposed that moms rate their kids higher than teachers, so I'm interested in really what the moms do. So I'm gonna put the moms first and then the teachers. So that way I know I'm doing mom minus teacher. So if this number comes out positive, I know moms rated their kids higher. If this had come out negative, I would know that moms rate their kids lower. So it's really important that you are cognizant of what order you put them in here so that your math makes sense to you. I just wanna show you what would happen if I had changed it up. So let's say I had put teacher first and then mom. So now this is saying teacher minus mom is a negative number. That means teachers rate their kids lower than the moms do. Do you see how these numbers will change depending on what order you put them in? The number itself didn't change, it's just whether it's positive or negative. So that's just something you'll have to keep in mind when you put data in here so that you can understand what the result is. And again, I would encourage you to put the descriptives because then you can see here the, the mean for the teachers and the mean for the moms. And you'll also want to keep an eye on whether it's one-tailed or two-tailed. So if it had been one-tailed and I thought that the moms were going to rate the kids higher. Now notice my moms are my measure two, the way I set it up here. So then I would have to click on this button. And that just changed my probability um, to roughly half. Then if I had thought, I thought teachers were going to rate the kids higher than moms, then I would have done this um, button here. So you want to make sure you know um, which one is measure one. Measure one is whatever's in this box. And if you're doing a one-tailed test, you have to select the appropriate one-tailed test. Otherwise, if you leave it a two-tailed test, then you would select that one because that's your alternative hypothesis listed there. Okay.